as I've expressed to you over um, over the internet, I, I love you. I'm very fond of your work. Well, I, I'm I'm very endeared by you too. I'm just glad I didn't get the menopause question. <laughs> don't mi don't mix up the cards, because do you know what menopause is? Do yes, I, yes, I do you actually, do. but I don't want to go you into it. You know a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you uh, write uh, multiple times a day on online on Esquire.com. Right. Uh, a lot of it is about the president of the United States. You when you write the word president, you add an asterisk. After I do president. Yeah. And when did that start? Actually, I have to give my wife credit for that. Oh. I was trying to find a way to express my <laughs> the deep respect and you know that I hold for the incumbent president as well as the respect I hold for the office. <laughs> and I kept tearing up the language, trying to find a way to do it. And my wife's my wife Margaret said, Why don't you just use an asterisk? <laughs> and you know, in the spirit of Roger Maris, I said, why not? We'll give him an asterisk. You do not capitalize the word president either. No, I don't do that. No. That's that's an old newspaper style thing. If you don't use the surname, you do not I you don't see. capitalize So me. you're just being grammatically I'm just, correct. I am just being yeah. an associated press nerd, yes. I see, I got you. All right. So um, you were supposed to be here after the State of the Union address. I thought it was great, didn't you? <laughs> it was best. The, the best, best speech one. he ever gave. <laughs> It was to the point. <laughs> but when Nancy Pelosi un disinvited the president, uh, which I didn't even know that was the way it went, I had no oh, you idea. Oh, ha you have, you have to be invited. And, and of course, nobody actually gave a speech between Tom President Thomas Jefferson and President Woodrow Wilson. All they did was send up, you know, a message. Right. So I figured the president could just tweet it out. Right, you know, sure. I I'm great, and so is the State of the Union. Fake news. Do you think it was... <laughs> And there uh, we are. Were well, you think it was a productive thing that she did when she told him you may not come to the house and give I, this speech? I thought it was a cutthroat thing she did uh -huh. when she's yeah, you mean no, you can't come in and we're not going to let you come in and by the way, I'll let you know when you can come in. Yeah, well it's interesting and I wonder but I wonder if it does any good. Do you think it does? Oh, it... I, I'm not entirely sure anything does any good. <laughs> you know, I mean if, if if everything if the the endless list of things that have happened around this president hasn't done any good yet, doing that isn't going to do it. I mean, I think it did the nation good because mm -hmm. we didn't have to listen to it. <laughs> well, now we do on Tuesday. Anyway. That's right. As you know, a lot of people are throwing their hat in the ring. They say yeah. they want to be president in 2020. Except Eric Garcetti, who doesn't want to be president. Hey, do you think <laughs> he's the mayor of Los Angeles? Right. You think he doesn't want to be president? I don't. I think he doesn't want to run for president. Frankly, I don't blame him. Uh -huh. I mean, nobody. I mean, it's a soul destroying spirit-sucking process that requires you to kiss a pig in Iowa. Yeah. So, I mean, anybody who doesn't want to run for president, they have my respect, too. <laughs> Do you think Trump will make it to 2020 as president of I the think United he, States? I think the odds are probably around 60-40 that he will. That he will? That he will, yeah. I mean, I don't know. You know, he, is, he, has, the great, he has the best genes. Oh, well, and yeah. Has, sure. And he has husbanded the finite amount of energy that every human being has. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is all stuff he said. See, people, <laughs> people have forgotten most of this stuff. He doesn't know the word husbanded. No. Well, he's, well he he's, doesn't know the he's meaning been, of it, that's for sure. He's been de-husbanded a few times, yeah. but he doesn't know husbanded. <laughs> but, no, I, th I, mean, I mean, if he wanted a way out, he could claim, I'm sure, that he has some sort of ailment. That's what I because would Because I think... Everyone would believe that. That's what I would do, too. Uh, I would say I went in for an MRI and the needles in my wig went right through my head. <laughs> and I need to take a break. That is what he should do. Yeah. A lot of people think Joe Biden is the Democrats' best chance to win. You do not agree with that. No, I don't. Uh, and, I, and I like Joe Biden. Uh, and I thought he was a heck of a vice president. In fact, if he wanted to announce right now that he's running for vice president, you, I would vote for him. You'd be on board? I would, yes. I think <laughs> he should have to run for vice president, too, like the old days. But, no, I think, I think he's missed his window uh -huh. at, sometime in the 1980s, to be perfectly honest with you. And uh, uh, I think that the party has moved considerably in a more progressive di direction than to sat be satisfied with Joe Biden. I think there are people out there who can appeal to the same... You know, Joe Biden voters in the Midwest, I think certainly Sherrod Brown from Ohio, if he gets in, could do that. I think, you know, Senator Elizabeth Warren from my own state is, is, move, is moving in that direction, as is Kamala Harris. I just don't think that, I don't think there's a spot for him this time. I think if he wanted to be kingmaker, that would be his role. I see. Yeah. He could go and he, I mean, I would somebody. have, if I was a Democratic politician, I would love to have Joe Biden on the stump for me. Because mm -hmm. he really, li I mean, I talked about kissing the pig in Iowa. Joe Biden will slow dance with the pig in Iowa. <laughs> he, he loves all the political stuff uh -huh. that most politicians hate.
Trump said that, he said, we're going to take a break from the shutdown. We're going to, in three weeks, we're going to negotiate. We're going to try to come up with a deal for the wall. And if not, I'm going to shut the government down. Will he shut the government down in, in two and a half weeks' time? No, because the, the Republican senators will run for the lifeboats. Mm -hmm. uh, it, Chuck Schumer could put up a, a bill saying we're reopening the government and we're going to give everybody in America a $10,000 check, and the Republicans would sign on to that. They don't want another shutdown. Nobody wants another shutdown. I mean, they had, you know, air traffic controllers saying, hey, don't get on an airplane this week. I, right, mean, yeah. I mean, that was, a seri that was some very serious business. I mean, you had multi-million dollar damage to places like Joshua Tree out here. It, the, the shutdown helps nobody, and it really helped, it doesn't help the Republicans. And they've got, you know, somebody's got to run for Senate again in 2020, and they don't want that hung around their necks. Today, Roger Stone <laughs> pled not guilty to a variety of counts. Is he? It, it, do you know him? Have no, you, I, I mean, I, obviously, every, anyone around politics. He seems like a good guy. You know, just swell guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If, if like, H.R. Puff and stuff had gone to Slytherin, <laughs> that would be Roger Stone. Uh, he's, he is sort of in, uh, you know, the, his, the, the, the long history of American political pranksters, which is, you know, a proud tradition of American politics. He's kind of the, like the evil twin of that. He, what, he, what he does hurts people. What he does is damage people. And I think that, that you know, the, there are limits to political pranksterism. That being said, he's a great show. I mm -hmm. mean... Well, speaking of great shows, Rudy Giuliani. It, it was, was Rudy Giuliani always like this and we didn't realize it? Or did something... Some believe he was, he was bitten by a radioactive clown. <laughs> How did this happen? I, I honestly don't know, because when he was the U.S. attorney in New York, uh, he was a very stern, you know, Catholic, kind of rigid guy who used to perp walk stockbrokers out of, you know, uh, Wall Street offices in handcuffs. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, at the same time, you know, he was, had this Baroque private life, which we only learned about afterwards. Right. But now, I mean, it, 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 now he's, he's out there being... You know, the president's buffoon. And I'm not, I mean, this guy, I mean, if I'm ever charged with capital murder, don't hire Rudy Giuliani as my lawyer, please, because he's going to get on television and tell people I did it. Is there so. <laughs> he's going to, no, no, seriously, he's going to have the knife. See, this is the one he used right here. And we're selling it for and a very and, low that's price. Right. And yes. you can have it on eBay. Well, I love your, I love your stuff. I, I appreciate call it. You, you, it seems like you're just reading and watching all day long and posting about it. Yeah, I mean, I wake up in the morning and, you know, I used to write a newspaper column, so I know what it's like to have a, a semi permanent deadline. But I wake up in the morning and there's a brief moment where I say, God, what am I going to write about today? And then I turn on the internet. And there it is. <laughs> and there... A, a target-rich environment. Yes, yeah. Well, I guess there's a, there's a silver lining there, is well, what there is. Yeah. Well, Charles Pierce, you can see it, uh, his column, Politics with Charles B. Pierce at Esquire.com. Thank you very much, Thanks Charles, for, for being me. here. Congratulations on making it to the end of a YouTube video. Why not celebrate by clicking the subscribe button? You earned it.